Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join His mission. Well, not only a part of your story, but I think a part of a lot of people's stories. They come, they have this image of uh, the overseas foreign field and how exciting it might be to serve there. And generally, as you know, missionary attrition is a real thing, term one. Typically, people don't make it past a year and a half, maybe two years, two and a half, pushing it max. I mean, it's a real thing. And then uh, being able, this is what I've always appreciated about both of you, Elizabeth, as you just shared, being able to accept and talk through these faith journeys and faith um, questions and say, yeah, maybe that we're asking the wrong question, not how to thrive, um, not how to survive. I mean, look, once you get overseas, you have to deal with how to get a visa, number one. That alone will not... It will, will distract you so much. It's like, how can I thrive? I can't even get a visa. Can you talk to me a little bit about, though, um, you know, missionary attrition? This is a real thing. You guys somehow um, were able to come to the field and push through a little of those discrepancies of faith or difficulties. Uh, what about those who, who are struggling right now? How can they tackle these cross-cultural um, nuances? Mm-hmm. Good question. Yeah. Um, I, I want, I'll, I'll start by saying our first uh, week in Cambodia, we had planned on not sending anything back to our senders. We're just, we're going to arrive. We're going to really uh, experience life and we're gonna bond with the culture. And maybe the second or third day, Elizabeth said, we have to tell everybody that this is terrible and we made a huge mistake. <laughs> 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 and I'm like, no, you can't do that. But, but we did. And uh, Elizabeth wrote an email that was very, very honest um, within our first week of arriving. And it, it really freaked people out. Um, someone in our sitting they agency, well, someone in our sitting agency told us years later that they got that email our first week and thought, oh, goodness, we've made such a mistake sending the trotters. <laughs> but I think... We weren't just griping and complaining about, oh, this is hard. We, we were purposed, we were griping and complaining, but, uh, and Elizabeth really led this. We were reaching out to the people who cared about us, who knew us, who could pray for us, and who could support us. And yes. uh, we had connection with those people. And I heard from several people who said, we know that you guys are honest. Now that Elizabeth has said this, if you start saying good things are happening, we will believe you because <laughs> yeah. we always know that you're saying when it's really hard. <laughs> I don't yeah, know if you remember, remember those conversations. That. But, I remember that. <laughs> and I, I really did not want to say what she said in those first emails. Yeah. I thought it would ruin her. I thought people wouldn't support us anymore. And it turned out it was completely opposite. People prayed. They, they, it wasn't about financial support, but we felt so much moral and spiritual support from those people in that first crisis. And I think that really set the tone for the future. So I would encourage anyone who's experiencing that to, you know, we're so afraid of being vulnerable. Um, yeah. And vulnerability, of course, is, is different than just blabbing everything, but actually being vulnerable about yes. what you're feeling and what you're going through. It doesn't have to be with everybody. It doesn't have to be with Facebook, but it, it can be, and maybe it should be with the people who know you, the people who have sent you. That made a huge difference for us in that first uh, mm-hmm. that first term. Missions Pulse. Know God's heart, join His mission. This podcast is powered by Within Reach Global. Subscribe, watch, and listen on YouTube today. Visit missionspulse.com.